It is always a privilege to be with you. Let me welcome you uh, today to our study of Deuteronomy. Uh, we're going to be in chapter 7 today. Uh, really, our, our talk today is going to cover the whole chapter uh, 7 of the book of Deuteronomy, but we're only going to read the first 10 verses. So join me, if you would, in Deuteronomy chapters 1 through 10. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods, and the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affections on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other people, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out, of, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is good. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and those who keep his commandments. But those who hate him Will, he will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay their face, those who hate him. So Deuteronomy 7 addresses one of the major, maybe the most difficult topics uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, one of the most difficult topics in Scripture and definitely in the Old Testament, the command of God to destroy the enemies. That, that, that are in the land, the Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Girgashites, uh, Jebusites, these seven nations, Amorites, that live in the land of Canaan. And we could go into a deeper discussion of, of actually how God's commands are more merciful than the customs of the day. We could talk about the reasons behind why God is doing this, but the simple answer is God's people have to protect what God has done for them. They have to protect the fact that they are different. Now, we live in a different world today. We don't have a, uh, a nation like Israel today, a theocracy. We have a people of God not defined by their political position or place in the world, not defined by, by physical bloodline. We have a people today defined by the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the same way, we are called to be holy, different, and set apart. This does not mean that we have to uh, destroy other people or re re remove any semblance of the modern world in our lives. This means that we have to take radical steps to destroy the idols in our lives and in our hearts that stand in the way of us being the people of God. This can take many, many forms. This can take political forms or tradition or religious forms or preferences. This can take uh, uh, elitism or, or can take the form of race or nationalism. So many directions. But we as God's people have a responsibility, an expectation, a command from God to take radical steps. to remove from our lives those things that steal our, 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 our worship, those things that make us look like the world. 
I've said before, uh, for some of us, I'm not going to go into every one of these examples, but one radical step that I've said is that if you can't engage in politics while loving people that are different than you, you should never engage in politics again. If you can't live your Christian life wholly devoted to God, while maintaining every aspect of your Christian character, as God commands, as God expects, then you should cut that out of your life. We are called to be different. But that's not even at the heart of this text. That's the practical application for us from this text from the whole of chapter 7. The heart, the point, the reason that we live this way is what, what Moses records for us uh, in verses 6 and 7 and 8. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Listen, the reason we are different is because God chose us. God chose you to be his child. Moses goes forward, he said, it's not because you're more numerous. It's not because you're better. It's not because you're prettier. It's not because you're smarter or richer or any reason of those things. In 1 Corinthians, Paul actually tells us that God chose us because we were the garbage of the world. Because we were the lowest in society, the least smart, the least educated, the least good looking. He says we were garbage and God chose us. So if he doesn't choose us because we're better, why does God choose you and me? Why did God choose Israel? Verse 8. It was because the Lord loved you and he kept his oath to your ancestors what is it what is Moses is saying God chose you because he loves you and he keeps his promises this is why we're different this is why we're, we're, to, we're to, to, to do what Paul says in Romans 12 to present our bodies as a living sacrifice this is how we can proclaim that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain this is how we can say everything that I once thought as gain I now count as loss this is how we can say that the old person is gone and the new is come this is how we can say I've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me because the creator sustainer and savior of the world chose you because he loves you this is why we're different this is why we give up whatever it costs. This is why we make the hard decisions to live as God's people, different from everybody else in every aspect of our lives. Not for the purpose of being excluded, but for the purpose of being holy. And if you recall when God made that promise to Abraham in Genesis 12 that he would make a great nation out of him, he says in Roman, uh, Genesis 12 that I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will bless those who bless you. But he says I'm choosing you for the benefit of other nations. God loves you and he chose you so that you could be saved and that you could work to save other people, to proclaim his name, to be a light to the nations so that other people might have life in Jesus. God chose you. He loves you. Now, be about his mission in this world. Father God, we thank you. What an incredible reminder of your expectation for us because of 
the salvation we've experienced. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for loving me. I pray that you would help me to give up everything else. Make everything else second for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow.